seems so simple. She stabbed her father to death. They go for first degree murder. Please help me. Defending an innocent girl. Beautiful girl, too bad she's a monster. I'm gonna win this case. Who's far from innocent. I should do something for you. This kid scares the hell out of me. A family with too many secrets. Did she kill him? I hope she did. Too many motives. Grieving widow gets eight million. They think that she's a murderer. And just when you think it's over. Damn it, talk to me. It isn't. We find the defendant. What? Brian Denny, Bonnie Bedelia, Shadow of a Doubt, NBC Tonight. Attention, all military, E1 and up, and civil service. No money down. Getting credit is no problem, and you can get it today with absolutely no payments for 60 days. At New Home TV and Furniture, it's easy to own anything from the huge selection of furniture, TVs, appliances, camcorders, side jewelry, and more. Remember, no money down. Credit is not a problem. No payments for 60 days. Take it home today. It's yours from New Home TV and Furniture. Buy now. They whine, they moan, they pester you for what they want. Not your kids. They're easy. Your husband. Cool. If he likes football, he'll love the greatest moments in Super Bowl history. Now exclusively at Food Lion, where you can register to win a trip to the 1996 Super Bowl. Meanwhile, you'll save big with Food Lion's extra low prices. So come to Food Lion and get the Super Bowl video before your little boy starts whining. Food Lion, extra low prices and more. Honey, can you make me another sandwich? Road Rebels, Thursdays at 5.30, only on Wavy TV 10. You were learning. Learning how to dribble, how to shoot. But there was more. Things that weren't as much fun, but just as important. Things that made a difference. You learned so much about this game. You even learned to love it. And just when you thought you knew it all, you learned a little more. Summer in Atlanta, the greatest spectacle in sports. The Olympic Games return to America on NBC. This is the Domino's Pizza NFL on NBC Halftime Report. Brought to you by Domino's Pizza. When it's got to be great and it's got to be now, it's got to be, got to be Domino's. You've been watching the Oilers and the Steelers. We welcome you back to our studio in New York, along with Mike Ditka and Joe Gibbs. I'm Greg Gumbel. Here are the scores and highlights around the league thus far. We'll begin at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, where at halftime, the Packers and the Cincinnati Bengals are tied at 10 apiece. Veteran quarterback Jim McMahon signed this week by Green Bay to back up, back up Brett Favre. On third and four, Favre can't find an open man. Scrambles, 11 yards, first down. That led to a 41-yard Chris Jackie field goal in the Packers' 3-0 lead. Jeff Blake, however, looks deep for Carl Pickens, who beat Doug Evans for 54 yards. That set up a game-tying field goal by Doug Pelfrey. 3-3 tie, Jeff Blake to Pickens. Four yards and a touchdown. Pickens, 16th catch of the year for a TD. Bengals up 10-3, but with six seconds to play in the first half, a rifle shot far to Mark Ingram, 13 yards. That ties it at 10. Two of the better quarterbacks in the National Football League doing battle here. Take a look out of the top five. Four of them come out of the NFC Central. The fifth one is Jeff Blake. Pretty good offensive show going on. Well, I think it is, and I think what is the other part of this ball game, both defenses are not really good at taking the ball away. You got to look at it today. No turnovers on either side. Blake is hot. Far is hot. 17 for 22, 184 yards. Uh, you got to figure there's going to be more fireworks in the second half. All right, Joe. It's a 10 10 tie right now in Green Bay. In Miami, the uh, Dolphins and Don Shula trying to get things right. It hasn't happened so far. The Falcons are leading early in the second half, 14 to 9. In Carolina, the Colts and the Panthers are at halftime, and they are tied at 10 apiece. Ted Marcher wrote his Colts just one game back in the AFC East. On their opening drive, second play from scrimmage, Jim Harbaugh looks deep, finds Sean Dawkins for a 31-yard touchdown. Colts led it 7-0. A little Panther trickery backfired in the second quarter. 10-0 Colts. Kerry Collins hands off to Eric Gulliford. His pass picked off by Ray Buchanan. Carolina leads the league in turnovers. And on third and inches, Collins on the quarterback sneak for the one-yard touchdown. Colts down 10, or up 10-7 at that point, and a Carolina field goal ties it at halftime. It is 10-10. In Minnesota, the Vikings trampling the Tampa Bay Bucks so far. At halftime, it's 28-7 Vikes. 
in Three River Stadium, the game that you are watching, the Steelers at halftime leading the Houston Oilers by a score of 14 to 7. Pittsburgh with an 8 and 4 record, the Oilers 5 and 7. And Mike, we talked about the Houston Oilers in the pregame show. You like what Jeff Fisher is doing? What do you think about this game so far? Well, I think he's got it going in the right direction, though. He's got a, a pretty balanced attack of, of run and pass. The defense plays pretty solid football. What they've done is they've given up too much passing. O'Donnell, Thigpen have been great out there today. Really, this is a very good football game, and I, I think this is a good football team coming up uh, in the Houston Oilers. Okay, meanwhile, the Steelers with a win today can clinch the AFC Central, or they can tie, and Cincinnati loses or ties, and the Steelers clinch the title. In the Meadowlands, the New York Jets trail the St. Louis Rams, approaching halftime. It's 7-0. Rams' Marvin Washington has been ejected in that game for a late hit on the St. Louis quarterback, and in New England, the Patriots and the Saints at halftime. The Saints are leading it by a field goal, 17-14. to 14. When we come back, we'll hear from Marcus Allen of the Chiefs. Kansas City can clinch the AFC West with a win over the Raiders today. First, we'll take a break for these words from your local station. Tuesday's twice as funny. Hey! Hey! With the first of double wings, then news radio. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! And then, <laughs> see why this Frazier brought home the Emmy. Very nice. Thank you. And another wing where rules are strictly enforced. No... Stand back, it's musty TV. NBC Tuesday. Dateline Tuesday. Vegas and the mob. You ordered somebody to smash his hand. If it happened, I wouldn't tell you anyway. The true story of how the mob rules Sin City. Dateline NBC Tuesday. Same cars, same price. But one of them costs up to 15% less to insure. Giving one driver more money toward accessories. Geico, a 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Every week, 10,000 drivers switch their car insurance to Geico for greater savings and 24-hour service. Maybe you should join the stampede. Geico, a 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. You're watching the station on your side. Wavy TV 10. This is the Domino's Pizza NFL on NBC Halftime Report. Brought to you by Domino's Pizza. When it's gotta be great, and it's gotta be now, it's gotta be, gotta be Domino's. Later today, the Chiefs and the Raiders renew their rivalry with Kansas City looking to clinch the AFC West with a win. If they do, it will be sweet for former Raider Marcus Allen. I talked with him earlier this week. Do you ever think about the Hall of Fame? Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's difficult not to. When the day comes, does Marcus Allen go into the Hall of Fame as a Kansas City Chief or as a Raider? Well, I'm going to go in as a chief, but I think most people will remember me and recognize me as a, as a Raider. But for, uh, these last couple of years have been the most important of my life because it's, uh, it was a rebirth for me. Because uh, prior to that, football was become extremely miserable for me. And I think the only person that was really hurting was myself. Even though, uh, I shouldn't say I was forced into that, but it was, it was made difficult for me, so. You're saying there's a renewed enthusiasm. Oh, yeah. I mean, I really didn't, uh, earlier, I didn't, I really didn't give a damn about, uh, I mean, I'm also, I almost was going through the motions, which was uh, totally uncharacteristic of me, but that's uh, <laughs> how down I was about playing out there. 15,000 career yards for Marcus Allen. You want to play more football after this season? Oh, I still have the fire, yeah. And it's burning bright. Before I started playing, I was going to say, well, how long am I going to play? Ten years would be great, right? And then I get out and I do something else. Well, you know what? It goes by so quickly. Sometimes I, I say to myself, man, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> what are you going to call it quits? You know, when I was a rookie, it was like, you know, played on Sunday, and I felt fine on Tuesday. You know, now it's like <laughs> playing on Sunday, and I'm still struggling on Saturday, you know? <laughs> There is a lot of um, animosity towards each other, and there's always, I guess, an intense rivalry, and there's always been some character or some players or whatever that sort of added to it and sort of perpetuated the rivalry. And uh, obviously the last couple of years, things have gone the, uh, the Chiefs' way, and, and uh, they don't like that. Has this become a more intense matchup for you personally? Well, the game is special to me. Um, it, 
it, it means a great deal. But once again, I, I, I won't let it overshadow what uh, my team is trying to accomplish. We're in a position, I think, uh, for the first time to really realize a, a dream of ours, that's to go all the way. And they're in the way, and we can't let anything stand in the way. You know, most people think of Marcus Allen as a former Oakland Raider, but this will be the first game that Marcus has ever played in Oakland. He was the first draft pick ever of the Los Angeles Raiders. Joe Gibbs, we know what you think of Marcus Allen whenever you think of him. Every year, would he please retire, Marcus? Every year, that double back play in the 83 Super Bowl, I'd, ha I'd have another Super Bowl ring if it wasn't for this guy. As a coach, though, Greg, uh, I think in analyzing players, you think back to the Walter Paytons that Mike had. And the thing that I admire about Marcus Allen and Walter Payton is the fact that not only with the ball under their arm, but they also are great players when it comes to blocking and short yardage goal line runners. They're complete all-around players. Yeah, you've had your experiences with Marcus, too. You know, in 1984, I preached to our ball club, to be a great team, you had to beat the great teams. The Raiders were a great football team at that time. And we played him in Soldier Field in the most physical football game I ever watched. We knocked out Mark Wilson. They knocked out Jim McMahon. Their next quarterback was going to be Ray Guy. I mean, and he was scared to death. But this guy, Marcus Allen, stood up to our guys on every play, every down. He was the toughest guy on the field, including all the guys I had. And the Kansas City Chiefs will say Marcus Allen is their leader on the field. We'll take a time out here. Our NFL and NBC halftime activities continue. Checking out a little personal history at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I can't believe it's been five years since I last played a game in the National Football League. But now I can get right back into the action, thanks to an exciting and unique attraction called the 100-Yard Universe. Your official sideline pass admits you to the locker room theater, where six channels of digital surround sound put you in the middle of pregame preparation. You'll never get closer to an NFL pep talk. Then some advanced technology puts a new spin on things, literally. This theater actually rotates, allowing the fans to follow the players on game day from the locker room to the field for the spectacular stadium show. It's a cinemascope extravaganza, supported by an 80-piece orchestra that brings the action so close, you can almost touch it. Watch out! So take a trip to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. You'll see NFL action like you've never seen it before in the 100-yard universe. This message furnished by the National Football League. Back in Pittsburgh, a 14-7 still a lead over the Oilers as we head to the uh, third quarter. You look back to that earlier meeting, Chris, back uh, in September at the Astrodome. Five sacks for the Steelers on Chris Chandler, already four in the first half. Yeah, and I thought that Pittsburgh early really wanted to bring the pressure. They blitzed a little bit more, and then late they'd just been sort of falling back and playing a zone defense and just relying on Kevin Green and Greg Lloyd to get a little pressure, but... The uh, Oilers really didn't respond to it. They didn't change their game plan, and especially on third down, they really struggled. They came in a very good team on third down with the conversions, but so far just one in this game. Ernie Mills awaiting the kickoff from the veteran Al Del Greco. 